Hi, Ian Dainty here again, and today I want to carry on with video two from the seven factors for B2B sales and marketing success. Um, as I mentioned in the last, in the first video, there are five pillars, four four systems, park systems that underlie all these five pillars, and of course the client-facing team, which is a foundation for everything in B2B. Before we go anywhere, I want you to remember this. There is no silver bullet in B2B. Otherwise, we'd all be millionaires, right? We wouldn't have to work very hard. So there, are, there is no silver bullet. However, number two, remember this. Once you master these seven factors, you're on your way to becoming a millionaire. And there are many sales, B2B salespeople who are millionaires, and certainly the executives are, OK? So but once you master these, and I'm going to show you how um, as we go through these videos. Today I want to talk about the five B2B buyer influences, why they are important, and how to uncover the buying decision process. So let's look at who this training is for, okay? It's for B2B business developers who are willing to put in the time and energy to succeed because they know it's worth it. For B2B business people who understand that building relationship takes time, but it's worth it. And for B2B people who want to make hundreds of thousands of dollars or more, as I said, there are millionaires and you could become one too. Not overnight, but certainly you can in B2B. And business people want to grow their net worth and are willing to get there. So if you fit into all of these categories or any of them, then this training is for you. Um, before we go on, though, I want you to forget this. Forrester's put out this number where they got 67%. I have no idea. But B2B buyers are 60 seven percent through their buying process before they contact a vendor forget that b2b salespeople are coming extinct forget that and you shouldn't contact a prospect first definitely forget that and i'm going to show you why, how, why and how later on in the this presentation so what are some of the issues you're going to run up against well you're going to run up against gatekeepers we're going to talk about them today the status quo is your biggest competitor you're going to have competition from everywhere, whether it's directly or from the flanks or indirectly. Be aware of that all the time. You must have differentiation. How does, you, how does your company differentiate itself? Price is a factor, irrespective of how we think. Price is a factor, but it's really only seven or eight down in the, in the factors. If they think you're a commodity, then price is the big factor. So we're going to show you how to deliver value instead of having to get into a price war. And benefits, of course, the number of benefits to me is when you add them all up, that's the value you bring. And of course, there's all kinds of different factors too that could happen, depending on the people and the personalities you belong that are in the company you're selling to. So let's look at the five B2B buyer influences. There are gatekeepers, researchers, users of your products and services, people who make the final decision, and champions, people who can help you get through the whole process. Let's look at each one. First of all, there are three important details, who they are, why and what they look for, and how to deal with them. So that's what we're going to look at in all of these, in each of these categories that we go through. Let's look at the gatekeepers and who they are. Well, they could be purchase, purchasing agents or procurement. Procurement is paying, uh, playing a much larger role in uh, B2B now, so you've got to be aware of them. And they could be the financial people. Legal people could be involved in what you're selling. Human resources, obviously, in a number of cases. IT people are going to get involved. You're selling a uh, technology product, obviously. Engineering people. Um, the people who actually uh, uh, use your product. The uh, uh, manufacturing people and of course don't forget the executive assistant who in some respect could be a gatekeeper too so there's many gatekeepers you're going to run up against and what do they ask well does this proposal fit the criteria we need that's what they're going to ask you They've, they're um, going to ask a bunch of things now each gatekeeper is a little different but that's in general what they're going to ask so why and what they judge and measure so you have to understand that do you meet the specifications that they've asked for? They make, rec they make recommendations. They can't say yes, but they can say no. They have the veto power, basically. They're almost like a president of the US. They have a veto power. So be well aware of that, OK? Important details about the gate gatekeepers. Treat them like allies, OK? Don't treat them as, as the scum of the earth or you know their opposition. Try and treat them like allies. Don't use a script. 
look look out for subtle cues about your decision maker. They're guiding, they're gatekeeping you from reaching the decision maker. A gatekeeper is a wealth of knowledge. Engage with the gate, gatekeeper. Don't try to evade them. Do but do not, and I'll stress this: sell to the gatekeeper. They're not going to buy. Remember, they can say no, but they can't say yes. Show confidence and ease, and request their help. So get them on your side. Treat them like allies. Okay. The next group, and it's a fairly new group, basically since the re um, internet has come along, and they're called researchers. They find you before you find them. The the decision makers and whoever have put together a, a group of people to go out and find products because they have an issue they want to solve. They understand why content, this is why, sorry, your content and SEO are important so that they can find you. They're appointed by the decision maker, as I said, very similar to gatekeepers and really act as gatekeepers in a lot of respects. They come from different departments usually, could be one from each, from finance, from IT, from uh, wherever, engineering, etc. And they make recommendations based on set criteria. So in essence, they are gatekeepers too, but they're kind of a new group that you, um, they find you first, okay? So you may not find them initially. Researchers ask, <coughs> excuse me, does this company's products and or services fit the criteria we need? So in essence, they're like box stickers. They tick off a bunch of criteria, and do you fit that? How to work with them? Understand their role. Help them, just like you would any gatekeeper. Go higher if possible, and there's a way to do that, and I teach that in my program as we go through it, and different in every sale, okay? So the researchers and gatekeepers and everybody is different in every sale. Keep that in mind. The users. They use or supervise your products or services. They're very personal, okay? Because they have to live with the success of your solution. They're going to use your solution. That's why they're called users. Duh. And they're a direct language of your success and their success. So they are the ones who are really, really, really interested in what you have to offer them, okay? They get into the product and service. They get into the nuts and bolts of everything, okay? But they are a direct link to your success and their success. So how to work with users. Solution affects them the most, as I mentioned. You must understand their role. You need to know the most senior VP in this role, whether it's the VP of IT or, or um, sales or marketing, uh, wherever it is, uh, whoever it is, uh, the CFO, even the CEO in some case. You've got to know that most senior VP. And you should get peer-to-peer -peer involvement. So if it's a VP of sales, you want to get your VP of sales involved, okay? He or she, your VP of sales should be involved in major accounts anyway. But that's another topic for another day. So that's how you work with users. Users ask this question. Will this product or services help me do my job better and or resolve a problem? Okay? That's what you want to do. What is the problem? What is their job? How can you help them work better? Obviously, that's why you're selling your products or services. The next one on the list is a decision maker. It could be an individual, or in some cases, it could be the, a committee. And depending on what the economic circumstances are in the marketplace or in the world, could even be the board of directors. They have direct access to funds, so you can um, show them that what you have can help them solve problems or progress their business. They can get funds for your project. They can release funds, as I said. And they have a discretionary use of funds, okay? Same thing. They also have veto power. So they can say no, obviously, but they also can say yes. And you should call him or her first before you call anybody else. And I'll get into that in a little bit later in this presentation. The decision makers ask, <coughs> excuse me, what kind of return will the company get on this investment and how really in a personal sense, how will it <clears throat> help me move my company forward or move my business forward, okay? Important you understand that. What's the ROI? The next person, <clears throat> excuse me, is the champion or enabler. Now, this person could be inside or outside either company, either your company or your prospect's company. They understand why the company is buying. They have access to all the buyers, and they understand how each buyer wins. So you can call them a champion. Some people are calling them an enabler now. And they focus on how can we win? In the sense that how can you win? How can the company that you're selling to win? <clears throat> so they're to help you as well as help the company, obviously. So that's why they're a champion for you and an enabler for inside that company. Okay? 
Champions ask, how can we convince everyone that this is the right decision for everybody, for your company and for the company you're selling to? So the best situation is when the champion equals the decision maker. Okay? That's the best decision you can get. So if you can get the decision maker on side as your champion, and I've done that in a number of cases, it makes things a lot easier. And you always get the best price when you're doing that too because you're at, you're at the point where price isn't as big a factor with them as the value you bring. And that's why you want to understand your full value. So here's a special bonus for you. How do you eliminate the gatekeeper? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, you got to get in the door, right? So how do you get in the B2B door? Well, let's look at the formula for it. First of all, you find leads and then you can, got to convert them to sales. So you have a client or prospects who aren't aware or concerned about anything that you have, but then they do become concerned and they want to learn more. You make the case for change. They investigate the options and you help them do that. They choose the options, preferably you, and then you implement. But there's one thing. How do, there's a bit of a gap here. A chasm between the unaware concern and wants to learn more, and that's a trigger event. The trigger event could come internally from them, their internal, hey, we've got a problem we got to solve, or it could come from you. And how could it come from you? Well, you're going to be, that's why content is so important, as I mentioned earlier, on your website, because you're going to be getting in touch with them, talking to them about the content you have, or sorry, the, the, your story based on the content you have, and therefore, they are aware of you. So when something, when they do become aware or concerned, they want to learn more and you're the first person they come to. So you need that trigger event and that's you by the fact that you've been in contact with them over an extended period of time. So that's how you get around the gatekeepers. You start by talking to the main decision maker right away or the enabler and champion that you can find. Okay? So the five B2B buyer influence, the gatekeepers, researchers, users, decision maker, and the champion whom you want, the bottom two, you want to be the same person if you can. So that's part of pillar number two, the buying process. We talked about the pillar number one before. And here's some of the issues in the buying process, or the elements rather. And you'll notice that the five influencers are just one of the elements of pillar two, the buying process. So it is a sophisticated process. But as I mentioned, once you learn it, you can become a millionaire by being in the right situation in the right time and selling the right products, okay? So that's part of it. We're gonna do that when I uh, announce my um, program in a few days. If you have any questions, please uh, email me at ian at maximizebusinessmarketing.com and I'll answer your questions or comments that you might have. I'll answer them all individually. Thanks a lot. Uh, please stay tuned for video three in a few short days.